Welcome, 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 long time no see, welcome back to 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, we are here with another episode of Quick Hits. Uh, we got a good one today. We're going to get into uh, Chocolate Latino uh, and Estrada 3 and uh, just the state of the super flyweight division. Uh, it was a great fight again, uh, as it's always going to be. Um, before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on all forms of social media. Uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, um, all forms of social media. Also, uh, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that town go to Autism Research and Recovery. That's Texas Boxing Scene um, on YouTube. Um, all right, let's get into today's show. Um, Chocolate Tito and Estrada 3 lived up to the hype. It got off to a little slow start. Um Thought uh, Chocolatito, the legend, got a little bit behind on the cards, uh, but he fought frantically to catch up. I had him winning seven to five, or or just to disclose all the facts. Um, I have no problem with the decision, not like the second fight, which I thought was borderline robbery. Uh, I thought Chocolatito clearly won the second fight. I don't have an issue with Estrada getting a nod in this fight. It's just it's frustrating when one guy gets the nod over and over and over again. Right, you go back to Lewis and Holyfield. Uh, it's a draw. Um, that's a bad example. Or Pacquiao, uh, Pacquiao Marquez, right? Pacquiao kept getting the decisions over and over again. These close decisions. Like, how come Marquez didn't get any of these? Um, now I know Chuck Tito got the decision in the first fight, but the first fight wasn't close on the card. It was a competitive fight, it was a fun fight, but it wasn't close. Um, it's like that Brandon, that uh Brandon Glanton fight um at, on Friday night in Florida. That was that was outrageous. I don't know if you guys watched that on Pro Box. Oh, that was awful. Um, Glenton won an eight nine round. I didn't even think the fight was close. He lose a close decision. Um, but I digress back to this. Um, Chocolatino still has a lot left. Uh, I don't know if he's going to retire. I, I don't think he is. I, um, what I found interesting was I think it was about six round or so, and some people had him down five nothing. Is that they had Chocolatino's trainer mic'd up. And and they asked him, um, you know, what's going on? Like, why 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 is your guy so lax? Why isn't he pressuring? Why isn't he the chocolate Tito we've known for the last ten years? Uh, and he said, we're gonna get going in the second half. And I thought, in the second half of the fight, I I, I thought he dominated the fight up until the last round. Um, I thought he ran through most of those rounds. I thought he built up a good lead, uh, a leader. I'm sorry, he built up a lead on the scorecards going into that last round. I thought he overcame uh, Strada's early lead. Had had, had I I had it. Uh, 7-4. He was safe on my card going to the last round. I gave the last round to Estrada, 7-5. Uh, Tito, again, there are close rounds in there. I, you could have 7-5, 6-6, seven, six, six, or 7-5. Seven, I, I think any card, 7-5 seven, or 6-6, six, 7-5 six, either way, or 6-6 six, six is, is a fine, reasonable, legitimate scorecard. That's no problem with a scorecard like that. 7-5, um, 6-6, six, six, that kind of fight. Um, I you know, I saw some variants in his cards. I, I want to know how y'all had it. Um, how, did, who do you have winning this fight? But, but um, it, it looked early on like Chuck Petito was a shot fighter. And it's like, okay, I think he can box okay, but he's going to have a tough time winning this fight. And then he just rallied. He just rallied. Combination punching, aggression. He was cutting off the rings. He was he was, he was doing what he wanted to with Estrada. Um, Estrada w- w- was, you know, hitting and moving, hitting and moving. And, and he was having some success, but it really – uh, for those middle rounds and later rounds, I had a uh, Chuck Tito in complete control. Um, Estrada gets the close decision. I don't have too much of an issue with that. Um, but you know, the better question is, you know, where do we go from here? We we look at the 115 uh, pound landscape, and that is the best division in sports. Um, so December 31st, three weeks from now, whatever it may be, you're gonna have Kazayoka, the WBO champ. And Josh Franco, the WBA champ, Unify, 
Um, so you're going to have a unified champion there. You have Fernando Martinez. It's going to be in a little, little bit of a tricky situation. He's going to be kind of the Terrence Crawford uh, of this division. You're going to have a ton of, of fighters on other sides of the street. Not, and, you know, PBC doesn't traditionally work across the aisle too much. I don't see them – I don't know what they're going to do. Um, look, you're going to have – I'm going to go out and let me say Franco Bitaoka. You're going to have Franco, Estrada, Chocolatito, all on other sides of the street. Now, Franco doesn't have a deal yet, but after he wins the Sayoka fight, it's, it's pretty foregone conclusion that he's going to sign a deal with Matchroom. It's been in work for a while. Um, he didn't want to sign anything until he got a mega fight. He's got his mega fight, ja uh, Japan, New Year's Eve. Um, so he's got he's got that. Then you got Estrada who, who ducked Franco. I, I don't know if he'll fight him now, if, if – I doubt it. I think Estrada is going to get tied up again in a fourth fight with Chocolatito, and I don't have a problem with that. I would rather see Estrada fight Franco, but Estrada just ducked Franco. You know, it's 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 interesting. It's interesting. Um, Bam couldn't get a fight. Estrada, so he vacated, went down to one twelve. Franco got a fight with Estrada. Uh, you know, to uh, between the two WBA champs, the super and the regular. Strata vacates that belt, fights with the WBC belt, which shot, which Bam threw away. So in essence, Juan Francisco Estrada has ducked the entire family. He's ducked Josh and Bam. It's interesting. <laughs> he's ducked. He's a friend of the whole family. Um, tells you how good of a fighting family that is. It's, uh, they're two, two elite-level world champions right there. Uh, but Friday was going to have his skill on display. Fernando Martinez, who's a really good fighter, who destroyed our cast twice. Like said, if fights on PBC, not likely to mix it up with the others. So that, that's going to be an issue. Also, at 115, you got uh, Kosai Tanaka. You have Nakatai. And you're still going to have Bam. We're going to get into Bam in just a second because Bam's the major player there. Um, you know, you got uh, Tanaka, Nakatani, who competed at 112. I, I think they're going to be competing at 115. You have Bam, who's competed at 115, going down to 112. But he's always going to be on the table at 112. Um you know, if a fight makes sense at 115, he'll do that. But we're going to get into him um, in a minute. He's going to win the WO belt. Um, also at 115, you have Argy Cotes. Um, and, and you saw Ron Cajas, who's a good fighter. So you got good fights there. You know, I, I, again, the, the odd man out here is going to be Fernando Martinez. I, I, I guess they're going to have him fight at Cajas again. Maybe we can get Argy Cotes, who doesn't have a promotional deal in the U.S. I, I, I don't know who you're really going to get for him. But you're in, like I said, the best division in the sport, top to bottom. Uh, that is the best division in the sport, 115. Um, so now we're going to – let's get to Bam. Let's get to Bam Rodriguez. Bam Rodriguez. Why everyone – why is he going to 112? Why, why is Bam Rodriguez going for 112? Well, there's a vacant belt he can grab, right? He can grab the WBO. And there's still really good fights there. Okay, but 115, Estrada's tied up with Chocolatito, and Estrada doesn't want to fight him. Um, so Chocolatito wouldn't be for a belt, although it would still be a great fight. And uh, It seems like Bam wants to unify. Well, he can't really unify any of the belts. Why? Because no one wants to fight him. He's not going to, you know, Josh is about, his brother's about to have two of the four belts, so he's not going to fight for any of those. Right? So, I mean, Bam, at, at 115, is in a tricky spot, right? You got Josh is going to have the WA and the WO. He would have the WBC. And Fernando Martinez, who fights on PBC and not likely to cross the aisle, has the IBF. So he's going to be in a tricky spot. So uh, 112, it, 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 right now, he, look, first of all, he's a 112 pounder. He came up from 108 to 115. He says he can't go back down to 115. At 108, he's outgrown that. So 112 is probably where he belongs. And there are good fights at 112, right? You got um, Sonny Edwards, who has the IBF. You have uh, Julio Cesar Martinez, which I think you are going to get soon, has WBC. And then the IBF, I'm sorry, Sonny. Uh, and then you have Hiroto Kayaguchi, who has the WBA? So you've got good champs over on that side, you know, at, at 112. You've, you've got 
a big fight you can make in Japan. You got Julio Cesar Martinez that you can make in the U.S. in San Antonio, which would be a massive fight. You got Sonny Edwards that you can make here or over in the U.K. So you got good fights. And obviously, Bam is going to win the, the WO over Christian Gonzalez. You've also got names like Christopher Rosales and Felix Alvarado, which are good fights. So he's got plenty of good fights at 112. Um, Bam is still in a good in a good spot. You know, I think for the right fight, he, he'll go back to 115. If, if, if Estrada or Chocolatito would agree to fight, I think that's a big enough money fight to draw him in. Um, but at 112, he's got good options. Like I said, Sonny Edwards, uh, Julio Cesar Martinez, uh, Hiroto, Kayaguchi, uh, Felix Alvarado, Christopher uh, Rosales. He's got fights a- on that side. So no no need for him to fight at a big weight class. 112 is his natural. You know, if you look at Josh and you look at Bam, and if you look at my Facebook profile, it's a picture of me, both of them. Josh is clearly bigger. Josh is a 115-pounder. Bam is a 112-pounder fighting at 115. You see, it's three pounds. What's the difference? Uh, it's a substantial amount of their body weight. You only weigh 112 or 115 pounds. Right? 112, I mean, it's it's about 3% of your body weight. It's 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 substantial. Now, he can fight at 115, and he could probably clear, clear the table at 115. You know, he, I, I think he could beat Chocolatito. I think he could beat Estrada. I think he could beat anyone. In that way, Ioka, Nietes, whatever name you want to put in front of him, I think he can beat all those guys. But 112 right now makes sense for him. So 115 uh, right now is the best division of the sport. Yeah, no question about it. I, I think 112 is in great shape, though. But I think you get Estrada, Chocolatino 4. And I think you get uh, Franco, Ioka. Uh, well, you do get that. You, you get a unified champ in, in December. And I, I think you're, you're going to look to make it. Should Franco win, which I'm picking him to win, I think you get Franco. Versus uh, Estrada uh, at some point next year for three of the four belts. And then you got uh, Fernando Martinez as the outsider. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Quick Hits comes at you every day. Uh, eight to ten minutes a day. We're going to start bringing you shows every day again. Uh, quick Hits. Uh, follow us on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, as well as on our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery from Texas to the world. Thank you. And God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.